Hey, I'm Kev Kim. Welcome back to MotoGP 19. Has BIG, the German Emperor at the Saxon Ring, on his Honda. Ten consecutive Grand Prix without conquering pole position is like an eternity for a rider of BIG's caliber. His chance to change this is the German Grand Prix, a country where he is venerated. The interaction ring. That is right, isn't it? BIG takes three poles and three podiums for the magical 2004. The Honda rider set the lead in front of everyone in the second free practice session and then even surpasses himself in qualifying, constantly hammering out one fast lap after another. Shinya Nakano, Nakazaki, what a legend, overtook him. But BIG reacted by breaking the 123 barrier first. This will be the 56th and last pole position of his career. So we have got to be a 123.5. I was thinking that's the same as last time, but it was actually a 24.5, wasn't it, around the Guna? As oh, the all digital dash is gone. Back the old analog rev count. That's all tristy Saxon ring. Such a difficult circuit to get right. As uh, demonstrated. But it's Marcus Land now. Definitely in the past decade it's been Marcus Land. Your circuit. It's all oh, that's very right. Oh yeah, quite a few riders who are pretty decent around it. Danny Pedros, I remember. Used to be one of his circuits. Yeah, Biaggi. Jonas Folger. I can't remember if it was his only MotoGP podium, but he got second in on that Tech 3. As... No, only, only the bronze. I think a problem I'm finding with the 2004 bikes is that you can just push them more. And you can those 2002 bikes. But I'm really not sure how far you can push them, so it's taking me a few laps to build up to it. But yeah, you had Biaggi. Remember, it was at Yamaha where he joined Honda after Rossi left. Basically, just swapped places. And where Rossi kind of racking up the titles and victories, it did not go well for Biaggi at Honda. In fact, it led to his retirement from MotoGP at the end of 2005 after a pretty horrid season. Oh yeah, the odd, odd moment in the sun. New Honda. It's a bit like Troy Bayliss with Honda, I remember. He, being on his camel bike, did not get the results after being let go by Ducati. But then Bayliss returned to Ducati and won in Valencia. And it returned to Ducati in World Superbikes as well. That's oh, I can't get the first corner right. Keep trying to push it too hard. Even though we're six tenths up, I would take that. God, you've got to be so patient on the floor in this first part. Now he can unleash the horses. Oh, second up. There goes a second. Yeah, there definitely goes a second.
And I said earlier as well, well, a couple episodes ago, they brought in Nicky Aiden. And we'll see who bites it Honda. And that's a pretty good relationship at the end. There's, that did nothing. Why are you... Why have you stopped me? I, I know I improved my time, but I only stop me when I'm getting a medal. I need to stop me when I've improved by a tenth or two. Like, that's really nothing. Don't even get any shinies for improving by that much. Plus, now I've got no gap indicator to that. But it should just let you go until you get gold, but... Well, someone will be fixing that now. They'll be they're busy on the way making MotoGP 20, hopefully. Uh, so, oh, I went on the power in the wrong moment. Lost the rear. Oh my god. Why are you trying to engine brake? Absolute pleb. How did I not lose that last couple of corners? For oh, sake. Anyway, just to finish the point on Nicky Aiden. Looks like I had a pretty good relationship in the end with the American, of course. In 2006, winning that title ahead of Caparossi on the Ducati uh, to go back to 2004 as he is lightning fast in Barcelona it's a 125cc and 250 champ so let's see how we can do as the Italian next time so have watching we'll find out then